A man over 40 uh, shows his care or demonstrates his care about you when he does this or he'll do this. Now, before we get into this, can we address the elephant in the room? The elephant in the room is human pair bonding is a mess. It's an absolute mess, especially if you're over 40. It's a whole, folks, I want to identify that a lot of advice out in the YouTube universe is geared to that 20 and 30 year old, predominantly those that are in their baby making years for women. And so it's so much different for those of us in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s, because most likely, roughly 75% of people in the dating marketplace who are over 45 years old are divorced. And divorce comes with it so many unique nuances that it cannot be deciphered in the same vein of someone in their 20s and 30s when their primary, and not that every man experiences or every ex woman experiences, but ultimately when people in their 20s and 30s meet up, oftentimes they are going to start a family. They're going to start a family. So their family is their shared passion, if you will, their shared passion. And so it's so much different for those of us in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, and even 70s, because most of us have children, and many people don't know how to integrate families together. And more importantly, they don't know how to navigate the meeting process, let alone integration of each other's lives. And let's just be real, online dating isn't a natural way to connect with people. Even though it happens to be the number one place most people are meeting today is through some sort of online connection, whether it's a dating site or a dating app, or it might be through some social media connection. For the most part, I would say, I would venture to say well over 50% of all new relationships happen with an online connection. And yet it is so unnatural for us because um, I'm going to say, I was about to use the word deceptive nature of it, but the actual poor effort people put into this medium, most people put in such poor effort into this medium. And then what happens when they meet this person in real life, they're oftentimes disappointed, whether it's the woman disappointed in the man or the man disappointed in the woman. Because in many cases, we create a false narrative, or in some cases, artificial intimacy has been built with this person before you ever actually meet them. Now, let's just say two people are lucky enough to care, you know, connect with one another. Well, we still have dysfunction in the dating marketplace because the vast majority of humans have poor relationship skills. They have poor relationship skills. They have poor communication skills. They have attachment issues. And if you're not familiar with the work of love attachment style, I highly recommend checking out the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller. By the way, all the books I recommend today will be linked below in the show notes under Jonathan Recommend Books. And, and that's just love attachment. Let's get into something known as the Imago. If you haven't read the work of Harvell Hendricks and Helen Hunt, Getting the Love You Want, the Imago, and for those that aren't familiar with it, it's spelled I-M-A-G-O, I-M-A-G-O. This is where oftentimes we choose partners similar to one or both of our care, early caretakers in our lives, because in my interpretation, we are trying to heal some level of a childhood wound or trauma. And by the way, when I say childhood wound and trauma, I don't mean it doesn't necessarily mean physical abuse, verbal abuse. It could be something benign, and yet it affects us as children. So what happens is we have, we, have a, we have a dating marketplace of humans. Right after about age 40, they go through some level of what's typically known as a midlife crisis. This is what I call when the blueprint of the reality you thought was going to be, or excuse me, the blueprint you thought your life was going to be collides with your reality. I think there was a movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jane, uh, um, what's it, Kate Winslet. I think Rep Reputation Road, Prep God, what was it? Uh, 
you know, where he was having his midlife crisis and she was having her midlife crisis. God, what's the name? Perpetual. Something road. OK, <laughs> can someone write it in the chat box? Uh, I just don't remember the movie, but it's a great illustration of what happens. And these were, were a married couple and the dysfunction they went through. Because in many ways, they didn't identify who they were before they ever entered into a relationship. Now, in a moment, I'll get to how a man demonstrates he cares, but I think this is a really important conversation to have, is that if a person hasn't gotten some sense of their identity, some sense of who they are, and they enter into a relationship with someone where their identity was, is a false identity created from their childhood or a confused identity, and by the way, this gets triggered in midlife because remember when I said that blueprint of where you thought your life was going to be like collides with your reality? That directly affects your identity and more important, the capacity that you can love yourself. In fact, I wrote a book about it called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. Why I'm bringing this up, and by the way, self-love isn't you know manicures, pedicures and working out at the gym. Okay, self-love, and by the way, that's part of it. Self-love is your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-reliance. It's all wrapped up in the concept of self-love. So what happens is divorce is a unique pivotal point in most everyone's life because on some level, it's the death of a dream. But more importantly, it's the unraveling of the tapestry of a life you had. And in many cases, it leaves most humans rather confused. So what makes the over 40 man or woman different than those in their 20s and 30s is most likely there's a higher probability you've gone through some divorce or some significant relationship some significant, by the way, I think the movie now was Revolution Road. <laughs> I think it just popped up on my screen. Um, so, so, so we have to be aware that our, our capacity, our emotional maturity directly affects our capacity to do what I'm about to share with you in a moment. Okay. Because a man over 40 cares about you. First and foremost, when he, I, I think men show they care about you when they treat you with respect. They treat you with respect. Now, what I mean by treat you with respect, I'm gonna boil this down to one thing, okay? Now, there's more than one thing, but I think this is probably one of the most important factors in how a man treats you with respect. And that is his penis doesn't rule him. His penis doesn't rule him. In fact, I want to share with you a, a quote I, I wrote. It's coming out on my, my Instagram soon. It says, a man shows respect for a woman in the early stage of the dating by not letting the little head do the driving. A man who can temper his sexual urges before trust is built, and I'll talk about that in a second, is a man who treats a woman with respect. What I mean to say is, you know, sexual urges are a good thing. I don't want to discount our capacity to be physically intimate with someone. But at the same time, are they physically intimate because they just want to ejaculate inside of you or ejaculate in your mouth? Or is it that there's some level of trust being built between the two of you? This is why I'm such an advocate for spending a, a significant amount of time building trust with one another before you embark on the chemical bandwagon of, um, of chemistry. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because a man might show he cares about you through, um, through the expression of his feelings, okay? Now, this is really critically important. So you have to stick you have to stay tuned for the next couple minutes of what I'm about to share, because there's sharing their feelings can be a bit confusing. So I want to identify this in a most important way, because this is the most confusing part, particularly for men versus women. Okay. So there's another meme I created and I'm going to read it to you, but it says, 
Beware of the man who doesn't talk about his feelings. Now, a man can share his past from an emotional perspective. He can share his struggles he has in his professional life. He can regularly say, I love you, but it's usually after you say it to him. Um, you regularly say, I love you. And he can even ask you to move in with him, but that doesn't mean he deeply cares for you. So here's the answer to this, you know, the title. The best way any man can show he cares is when he constantly opens up emotionally, sharing his feelings about you and what it feels like to be with you. Let me repeat that. He shares his feelings about you, but more importantly, he shares what it's like to be with you. If a man, a man demonstrates to true care when he expresses he expresses his feelings about you and towards you. You see, the man who has walls up, the man who's less likely to show he care, or excuse me, the man who is stoic and doesn't express his emotions towards you. See, let me pause for a moment. A man shows he cares when he wants to develop a genuine friendship with you. You see, Developing a genuine friendship with you. And when you are friends with each other, you demonstrate care for one another, but you also express your feelings about each other. You express your feelings about and what it's like to be with this person, particularly in the area of expressing appreciation for who you are, not what you do for them, but also what you mean to them. The, express, the expressing of appreciation and gratitude is a huge sign of someone demonstrating they care about you. Now, I recognize in the book, The Five Love Languages. In the book, The Five Love Languages, if you're not familiar with it, the five love languages are words of affirmation. By the way, if you're a Leo, it's words of adoration. Just a little FYI, we like to be adored. Words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and gifts. What I have a problem with this, as much as I am an advocate for this book, and there's a link below to get a copy of this book, I think some men in particular show they care through their actions, you know, like whether it's getting your gas tank filled up or making sure you have oil in your car or or you know maybe even driving you to, to a doctor's appointment. I, I do I recognize that that is a way a person can show they care. But ultimately, we have to break this old cycle, this old cycle. In fact, I was watching a YouTube video earlier and a, a woman was stating to women out there, a man's job is, is, um, isn't to open up his feelings towards you. His job is strictly being the provider protector. Now, I think this narrative is for men who are incapable of opening up their feelings. They want to control you, and they're usually incapable of being a genuine friend with you because they have deep wounds in their lives. This is just my speculation here. And the women who seek this narrative of the man being the provider protector, it's because they don't want to support themselves. He doesn't want to, they don't want to support themselves. So there's a lot of rhetoric out there and why I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm arguing against this rhetoric while it sounds great. The man's a provider protector. We have to face the real deep reality is that we have to support ourselves, whether we like it or not. There are absolutely no guarantees. Many women who have gone through this divorce period of time that I shared earlier, often finds, find themselves in situations where they're struggling even to take care of themselves financially. And so this narrative, the men are provider protectors, does that really work out? Does that really work out? What really demonstrates real care in a relationship is when someone builds a genuine friendship with you a genuine friendship with you. And more importantly, they open up their feelings about how about, listen, we have to be careful about when a man says, oh my God, it feels so wonderful to be with you because he's only focused on the pleasure that you give him. 
See, it's not And that's certainly an important, and this happens in the early stage of dating. I mean, how many of you have experienced the guy on a first date? Oh my God, you're so amazing. I could see myself getting married to you. You know, we should travel together, yada, 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 yada. That's because we're amped up on the chemicals of oxytocin, dopamine, testosterone, serotonin, just to name a few. We're experiencing luster limb ruts. But that's that's how he, how you make him feel. I'm talking about how he expresses his feelings about you as a person. He Does he express his feelings about you as a person, as a human being? What qualities and attributes about you does he admire? See, there are so many men incapable of opening up their heart in that capacity. But ultimately, isn't this what we want to experience? Isn't a romantic, romantic relationships are no rarely about survival anymore. It's about bonding at a deeper emotional level. If you're not familiar with the book, Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters, I highly recommend checking this out. Highly recommend reading this, okay? I think the understanding of our emotional world is the key to relationship success going forward, along with integrating into each other's lives, meeting each other's needs, being there for you, building trust. Do you know what trust is? Trust is, does this person have my best interest at heart? That's trust. When you know this other person has their best interest at heart. You know, sadly, we live in a self-centric world, particularly in the early stage of dating. It is riddled with, I want to get my needs met. It's rarely about the other person. I mean, and by the way, ladies, you are no picnic in this realm either. I'm going to say to you, you equally can be as, um, as avoidant, as dismissive, as entitled. This isn't, I'm I'm not here to, I'm going to say that I think both genders, when I was talking about this issue, both genders, well, by the way, I know there are more than, you know, the male, female from a political perspective, but I'm saying for the most part, to my audience, men and women are rather dysfunctional. So what's the antidote to all this? And what's the antidote? Because I know it can feel rather depressing thinking that there are no options out there. Let me just say this. There are a lot of good men out there that are ready to open their heart to someone. In many cases, they just don't know how. All they need is a little bit of training, believe it or not. It's interesting, my clients, and by the way, do you see this link right here to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you? I have curated a program where each module my clients go through actually use this in their dating process with the men. They show all the work we've done together. And it's amazing how the men are so receptive because all many men just need a little bit of coaxing. They don't know how to connect with their heart. Ladies, after going through a divorce myself, I didn't know this 15 years ago. It took me a lot of painstaking work to get to where I'm at today. But I'm going to tell you, it was a woman who opened my heart up. It was women who opened my heart up to understand me. Because when you actually begin to lead by example, expressing emotions, and if he can't follow your lead, if he's incapable of going there with you, then most likely he might care about you at a surface level but that doesn't mean he's ready to go all in with you. And just like even the man who asks you to live with him, that isn't a demonstration of all in. There's something more to all in, and that is the capacity to express their feelings, not how they feel being with you, but how they feel about you, the qualities they admire about you. That is a true demonstration of care. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. I do my best to read all the comments in the first 24 hours. 
As always, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And also, if you want to connect with me, schedule a discovery call with me. And in the show notes, you can uh, join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. Check out all the books I recommend. Follow me on Instagram as well. Okay.